Guy's name was Chicky Sasso, my father's cousin on his mother's side. He got out of Vietnam on account of the cops with his kneecap off. Can't bring a kid to an amusement park no more. Daddy! Daddy! It's okay, baby. It's Come okay, on, honey. honey. Using my sister Janice as a front, all the guys brought their daughters so that when they did their business, it looked sweet and innocent. Turned out it was no big deal. To see your father handcuffed, being led away by the police? Well, at the time, I thought my head was going to explode. He looked helpless. But when I got home, my mother had a different perspective, which made me feel better. Oh. So in her pain, she reached out to you. That's one Something way to like put it. it. Yeah. <laughs> your father may not be home for dinner tonight. Go wash up. What did he do? They didn't do anything. They just pick on the Italians. Good for you, Johnny. Show those fucking sons of bitches. What's up, Rocco? I don't understand. The man your father beat up? was the same one who was congratulating him? Yeah, one of them. My son is doomed, right? Why do you say that? Come on. This is the part when I'm supposed to tell you how terrible my father was and the terrible things he did to me and how he ruined my life. When he beat the shit out of that guy, I went to the class, I told him how tough my father was. Do you think that's how your son feels about you? Yeah, probably. And I'm glad, I'm glad if he's proud of me. But that's the bind I'm in, because I don't want him to be like me. Genetic predispositions are only that, predispositions. It's not a destiny written in stone. People have choices. She finally offers an opinion. <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> How come I'm not making fucking pots in Peru? You're born to this shit. You are what you are. Within that, there's a range of choices. He's gonna open a new supper club. He wants me to run it. A supper club? Oh, Perlamarona, Jesus Christ on my fucking albacore around my neck. Every time I try to do something, me and the kids will go without you. They are not going anywhere. I'd rather smother them with a pillow than take them to the theater. Always with the drum. The bitch said, I'd rather smother them with a pillow. <laughs> you shouldn't be so hard on him. He's got a lot to learn, oh, granted, but he's headed him. in the right direction. Fuck. Me too. Overbrook State Mental Hospital. Oh, no. What? We got to try and catch a ball game. Yeah, you got my number. All right. That man is so full of himself since becoming couple regime. He makes me sick. You know, they moved to Nevada. They're billionaires now. Oh, that Rocco Alatore, he was a real go-getter. Didn't Dad want to go with him? Your father? No. Wow. Yeah, he did. Wow. I remember you guys talking about it. Dad wanted to go with him. You wouldn't let him. You just tell me one time your father didn't do exactly as he wanted. Maybe this was his chance to get out. Mr. Sensitive now. Well, if it bothers you, maybe you better talk to a psychiatrist. <laughs> well, that's what people do when they're looking for somebody to blame for their life, isn't it? You're a real stone player, aren't you, Ma? Mm. You threaten to smother his children. You know, everybody thought Dad was the ruthless one, but I gotta hand it to you. If you'd been born after those feminists, you would have been the real gangster. Damn. I don't know what you're talking about. The APA standard is for the subject to manifest six out of nine possible symptoms of ADD. In testing, Anthony manifested five, often interrupts or intrudes on others, and often fidgets with hands or feet. And that's a sickness, to fidget. Mr. Soprano, it's one of nine possible symptoms. I mean, so what if he fidgets? He's in school. Who doesn't fidget in school? That's the trouble with you people. Every time you see a problem, you turn it into a disease. He's a kid who made a mistake, and he's going to pay for it. But he's going to be fine. Frankly, I think he's right. And I don't think we should have to pay for this testing either. It's not the end of the world, Dent. I'm depressed. You're not depressed. You're sad and you're angry because you did something stupid. And you got grounded. You can't watch TV. You're playing your fucking computer for two and a half weeks. It's going to stay like that. It isn't fair. Got that right. When she's ten feet and you know you're going to fall. Tell them all who goes. Sloping character. First, let me start by saying don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, make sure to hit the notification bell. Shout out to all the new viewers. Shout out to all the subscribers. And I have a Patreon. Full length early reactions to things like this. If you'd like to, check it out. Hmm. So, starting from the beginning, once they wanted to talk about his kid, and the guy was just sitting there, I just knew what was coming next. 
Um, I was, I, I was one of those kids who was diagnosed with something like that. The way it ended up, where they tell him, they have a, they have parameters. All right, out of nine is five, so he's borderline. But the things he that he listed off, one of them was fidgeting. Right, so on its own. It sounds like fidgeting, right? Now, I understand, like, I get the way this works. I get the way the science works, right? They're not just saying fidgeting on its own, but they're saying amongst other things, that's what would uh, create it. But the thing is, I understood why they felt that way, right? But the way they acted, it was like, okay. But I understand why they felt that way, right, uh, Tony and Carmella. But what has to happen is... Now it's on y'all to try to like figure something out, right? It don't matter if it's chess or something, because what that sounds like, as I said, is someone who wants to do something like that school shit is whack. It's just him sitting there, just sitting there, not being who he's supposed to be. If he's doing all of these things and it's just coming out of him and that's who he is as a person, that would mean just sitting there listening to somebody speak. It's not something that's meant for him. And I understand that as a society, we've sort of settled on this as the most efficient way to train up our next generation. But it's always been a question for me. And it hasn't changed or uh, subsided over time where I'm like, well, yeah, no, the way we do this, everybody learns. And yeah, but we we have the ability. There should be some sort of part of society where they are literally just watching kids and deciding, you know what? There's a there's a better way to teach him. You know what? Now, we have that, but it's for special cases. And that's what special education is. But this kid, he doesn't require special education. He's not mentally challenged or anything like that. So are we too lazy as a, a society to sort of like create another way for certain kids to learn? Now, this is what I will say with the with the the advent of the of the internet and the information age you see a lot of these young kids who otherwise wouldn't have had an outlet like so you heard me say sports right and then i came back later it was like it doesn't have to be sports i just said sports just offhanded i meant extracurricular activities and the reason i brought up the internet is because a lot of these kids are finding extracurricular activities on their own they're they're fi- it's for a parent it's kind of hard because you're thinking, I don't want to push them into something. I don't want to, you know what I mean? But for a lot of these kids, it's dope. The motherfuckers are doing skits. They're doing, like, yo, it's these one dudes, RDC World. I heard one of them tell a story. He went to work at Walmart one time, right? And I, he left after the first day. The shit wasn't meant for him. So the uh, Sort of the, the way that society is set up, we just assume that, hey, well, you have to abide by that. That shows that you are a normal human being who's able. But <laughs> this shit's not normal. This is something we've all created because it's the most efficient way to keep this giant horde of humans uh, working towards one concept. And that concept is just not have all of us killing each other over resources at one time. That that's literally all this is. And the what we're doing with the kids is we're trying to train them up to fall in line with that. But the thing is <laughs> Yo, am I going too deep uh, deep into this? The thing is that I'm sitting here knowing how it is as a kid to have that happen. And looking back on it, had I had the internet, yo, y'all see the way I am right now? Had I had this when I was a kid, this shit would have it would have saved me <laughs> and so i'm sitting here looking like yo like I, there would have been no military none of that shit i wouldn't have never had to go because i would have found something for myself and that's what's dope for these young kids they find an outlet the problem is we are we have we just have them cooped up in this place like nope this is how you do it and because the parents did it we go well that's the way it should be done and, uh, well what's wrong with it it worked for us it's like yeah so did fucking uh coal we need to stop using that though, huh? We, we found a better way, right? So, so is utilizing oil and natural gas, but we're looking for other, other things. So this whole notion of it worked in the past, why we gotta change it, the fuck out of here. Now here's where the science comes in. The doctors are doing what they do. They're finding something, they're trying to cure it. I don't fault them, but what I do fault is that it was a money-making 
machine. The amount of pills they were putting children on, it was bullshit. And knowing what I know now about the pharmaceutical industry, and there's this episode of Scrubs, right? There's this, like a few episodes where the farm, the pharmaceutical chick shows up, and her whole thing is to sell the hospital of uh, pharmaceuticals, at, not sell it to them, but make sure that they sell it and make sure that they utilize it. So you have them go to uh, trips. You you give them goodies and shit like that. And you talk them up and and it became this giant money making machine. So we have kids being put on these drugs and shit. So when a parent was to respond that way, it may seem as though, hey, they're just old school and they got to fall in line with the science. But it was right to question it at that moment, because once again, in this country, you cannot just look at it as what it is. Also look at what it is in relationship to capitalism, okay? So yes, the science, they're trying to help kids. Now what about the capitalist part? Oh, they're gonna prescribe pills? Well, how much more are they willing to do that for kids? Now let's go on to the next thing. God damn, six minutes on that? Huh, huh, huh. That had nothing to do with the show, did it? And that'll probably be cut out on YouTube. Look, uh, uh, his mom, as a fucking character, is great old school bitch oh yeah i said bitch i don't give a fuck <laughs> she's a she's she's a bigot bitch yeah, like she should be taking shots at black folks the whole show right and uh i find that funny like it's not somewhere i'm like oh funny because people like that are on the fucking way out and like you know what i mean but the fact that early on he says something to the effect of yo his mom was more colder than his father ever was and you wonder about that like huh i wonder how we're gonna get into that and we see it in this episode her father wants to go start a new life he wants to leave jersey and be on the ground floor something he sees is a way to make some good money and as tony said hey he's like dad wasn't no quiet boy nothing like that but he yo he probably could have gone straight and what does that mean also Tony would have been in that life. That that's Tony's thinking on that. But for him to remember and see his mom saying, "I'll smother these motherfucking kids. I'll smother these kids before I let you take them to 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 fucking Nevada." Right? She's that's a cold bitch, man. <laughs> Yo, I don't give a fuck. And then the young boy, he's going to see his mom, grandma. Now, what I found funny was Carmela making going to see the grandma part of his punishment. And the grandma not giving a fuck as long as she gets to see her grandkid. <laughs> right? But he's doing that thing. He just he's just a kid. He was there was no malice in it. He was just saying, yeah, dad goes to it, goes to talk to him too. And her being who she is, hilarious. She goes, uh, this, this, you know, he wants to talk about his mother and all this. And it's like, damn, she didn't even consider, oh, is it helping him? Does he seem different? She ain't asked no follow-up questions or nothing like that. So when Uncle Junior comes, Uncle Junior can see it in her eyes. Uncle June, he's like, yo, dang, she got a big problem. So my man leaves. They're like, hey, we'll talk to each other later. And she was this close to telling him about the, uh, the psychologist, the psychiatrist, I can't remember what's the difference. I know one could give you, can prescribe you stuff. I can't remember which one. But when Tony is, <laughs> when Tony is talking to his mom and she denied it, he talked about Rocco or whatever. And she's like, oh yeah, he went out there and started that. Eh. And he's like, yo, you didn't let Pops go. What the fuck is you talking about? And she's like, what? And tried to play like she don't know. Right, that's the type of woman this woman is, and she's terrible, but it makes for a great show, and I rock with it. Yeah, man, this was a good show. To see Tony having these flashbacks and the way he found out about his pops, and I couldn't figure out why he was taking his daughter. And then when I realized it, I was like, oh, shit. Once I saw Uncle June there, I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, they doing business there, right? So when they get, when they get uh, knocked or whatever, it was like, damn, that's funny. That's funny. But for him to, to find out that way, right? It's one of those things. I know I talked a long part about what's going on with his son, but I, fi I feel like that's important to the show because Tony is so worried about his kids 
and so is Carmella. But he made a point, and it's this. When Carmella, she's like kind of angry, and she sort of resents him. He's like, oh, word? He's doing bad, but what about our daughter? I, I don't get no credit for that, and it's that. Because then he asked a question later, like, yo, big pussy, he got one kid in college and the other two are going. And then he brings up another one. It's like, but hey, they they had a straight father who was making honest money. In it. But they, you know what I mean? They did some heinous shit. So he's just trying to figure out, so what is it with me? For him and Carmella to settle on, hey, are we going to sit down and have the talk with uh, with the daughter? Wow, I can't remember. Meadow, with Meadow. And I'm like, dang, that's interesting that they were just like, hey, we got to sit down and talk. And to see the wives, his mom and then his wife and how they deal with it, just knowing about it and talking about it, it's gonna be interesting to see how Meadow now deals with it. I don't, I'm not sure how long she stays on the show, um, like, cause she's supposed to go to college, but I, I do wonder what that's gonna be like, if we're actually gonna see that and if we're gonna see it this season. Also, I just assumed that Tony was going like fall in love with the doctor at some point. I just didn't know it was gonna be this early on i thought that's something we were going to see later on and the fact that she man she a professional like the way she talks about it with him she's like you didn't bring it up and then you know they start speaking on it and he tried to make her jealous and she just looked with those rimless glasses like wait are those cartiers by the way uh like them shits is fly but <laughs> them shits do look like the the fly cartiers that the motherfuckers in michigan be wearing them buffs and shit but uh yeah man hey another dope episode i really liked it as y'all know it's a whole bunch a bunch of shit you could talk about on this but hey next episode